Hi and welcome to the channel. In this channel, I will be reading books and we will be reaping the benefits together. I will not be giving summaries nor will I be giving reviews. I will be giving you everything there is to be given from a book and even more whenever I can. In this series, we will delve into the fascinating world of finance by exploring one of the best-selling books about money. No matter who you are or what your goals are, no matter how you're making money, whether it's from salaries or your own business, no matter how much you have, if your goal is wealth, then this book is a must read. Trust me, I personally know someone who was able to make his own business from the grounds up up all the way to making millions a month only to fall down back to zero and even more. According to Goodreads, this book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, is a book of 336 pages of valuable insight in which you will learn everything there is to learn about money and how to make it work for you. But do not worry. You will not have to read a single page of this book because I got you covered. I have read this book from cover to cover and I am here to explain it to you in a very easy to understand way. By the end of this series, you will have a completely new understanding about money and how the rich think about money. You will start thinking like the wealthy and before you know it you will be on your way to building your own fortune. I am confident that this book will change your financial life just like it has already changed the life of countless others and has already started changing mine. You are here because you're interested and I promise you you will not be disappointed. So go grab a cup of coffee, sit back, relax and let your mind reap the benefits. Without further ado, let's dive into the first episode of Money Mindset Makeover. We are going to start with the intro part of the book because I believe it is one of the best parts of the book. It is the juiciest or at least one of the juiciest parts of this book. I mean, Robert Kiyosaki did one hell of a job with this intro. In the intro, Robert Kiyosaki had a message for us that poor is a mindset and rich is a mindset. You could have $10 million and own a poor mindset which will lead to you losing that money in no time. On the other hand, you could own the rich mindset and have only like a thousand dollars, but you will definitely be on your way to being a millionaire. You see the guy who was able to make millions and then lose them, unfortunately, the one I talked about at the beginning of the video, I never understood how that could happen. It made no sense. You started, you invested, you did everything right. You had the quality, you had the quantity, you had everything only to lose it. After reading this book, a lot made sense. A lot made sense. But I still had some wonderings of whys and hows and certain psychological aspects which we will not be talking about in this video. Maybe in another video. Definitely in another video. Anywho, Robert Kiyosaki made a very, very, very beautiful example between the rich mindset and the poor mindset. He said he had two fathers, a rich one and a poor one. One was highly educated, very intelligent, he had a PhD. As for the other, he never even finished eighth grade. Both were hardworking, they were both very successful in their careers, and they both had substantial incomes and they had a lot of money. But the first would always struggle and the other would become one of the richest men in Hawaii. He said one would die leaving tens of millions of dollars to his family, charities and church while the other left bills to be paid. One left bills to be paid and the other 
left them with countless of blessings. He said they both gave him advice, but they never gave him the same thing. You see, both men strongly believed in education, but they never recommended the same course of study. One emphasized on academic education, while the other emphasized on real-world education as well as academic education. And I will explain what real-world education means shortly. He says, at that time, I was young, they were both starting out on their careers, and they were both struggling with money and families, and the rich was not rich yet, nor was the poor poor yet. So making a decision on who to listen to was really, really difficult. I mean, the difference in advice was huge. For example, one would say that the love of money was the root of all evil in the world. You see these people who run after money, who run after companies, who, who run after all these things. They are the reason why they are people robbing others of what they own. They are the reason why they are poor people. They are the reason why they are homeless people. And the other said that being poor and the lack of money is the root of all evil in the world. These are the reasons why people are robbing each other, why people are homeless, why there is so many chaos. <laughs> what? Who to listen to? Who is right? We will find that out later. One says, I cannot do it. It's difficult, I cannot do it. It is new to me, I cannot do it. It's new, what is that? I don't even know what that is. It is, I don't know, I cannot do it. While the other says, I have to learn how to do it. If it is new, I gotta learn how to do it. I don't know how to do it, I'll find a way on how to do it. And he would spend hours, days, he would spend a long time learning how to do this. And sometimes, at the end, he wouldn't even use what he learned. But, imagine the difference. This one I really love, okay? One says, you have to study well to get a good company to work in. And one says, you have to study well to get a good company to own. <laughs> oh my God, the difference. Ah. One says, the reason I am not rich is because of these kids. It's because of this family. I have to feed this and pay this for that and buy that and do all these things. Uh, they are the reason I am not rich. And one says, it is because of these kids. It is because of this family. It is because I have to buy this for them. It is because I have to feed them that I have to become rich. One says, when it comes to money, play it safe. Do not take any risk. While the other says, when it comes to money, learn how to manage risk. One says, our home is our largest investment and greatest asset. While the other believed, my house is a liability. If it is my greatest investment, I am in trouble. One used to say, I will never be rich. Not in a million years, not even in my dreams, I can't even imagine being rich. While the other, before owning millions, used to say, I am rich and rich people do not do this. He knew he was rich, or at least knew that he is on the path of becoming rich. Not only by talk, but by actions as well. He said, one of the best things that my rich dad taught me, is that there is a difference between being broke and being poor. Being broke is temporary, but being poor is permanent. So never fear being broke, but rather fear being poor. He said he was told that his poor dad was poor because of the way he thought, because of the way he looked at money, and because of how he dealt with money. 
As for the rich dad, he was rich because he had the mindset of the rich. He dealt with money the way the rich do. He looked at money the way the rich do. Robert talks about how some of the, or many of the poor class and middle class people talk about some of these lines. Where they say, ah, money is not important. Don't think about money a lot. Don't trouble yourself with money. Just excel in the education you get in these schools nowadays and the money will follow. Tell them, no, that is not true at all. If that is true, if money is not important and all you got to do is study and then the money will follow, why do you work all these hours that you work and keep doing that for the rest of your life, all the way to the age of, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 or whatever? Why? No, that is not true. Money is important. So, Robert ends this introduction with a beautiful story. In the year 1956, in the western region of the United States, about 2,000 miles away from the U.S. mainland in the Pacific Ocean, in the land of Hawaii, Robert walked up to his dad while he was reading the evening paper and asked him, Dad, teach me how to become rich. His dad was shocked. He moved away the evening paper and asked him, why do you want to become rich? He said because Jimmy's mom drove up with their new luxurious car today and picked Jimmy up and they were going to their beach house for the weekend. That's right. The rich have their own beach house that they go to for the weekend. <laughs> While you and I... <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so... Jimmy's father pushed the glass up his nose, up the bridge of his nose, opened the newspaper and continued reading. After some time had passed, Robert he was standing there the whole time. His dad put away the newspaper and said, Okay, listen, if you want to become rich, learn how to make money. So Robert he asked, How do I make money? His dad responded by saying, Well, use your head and kept quiet. It is as though he was saying, listen, that's it. <laughs> that's all you're gonna get from me, okay? No more questions and don't embarrass me. <laughs> Anyways, the next day he goes to his best friend Mike. Mike, not Jimmy, Jimmy is another guy, okay? He's that rich guy, that rich friend. So he goes to Mike and says, hey listen, do you want to become my partner? Uh, Mike asked him, partner in what? So Robert responded by saying, don't you want to be like Jimmy? Have all the fun they have in the house and the games and all that? He said, yes, well, I do. And so Mike agreed and they started brainstorming till they came up with an idea and they shook hands on that and started their operation of making money. It took them weeks. They ran around their neighborhood, knocking on doors, and asking neighbors if they would save the remains of tubes, of toothpaste tubes for them. So they got it from most of their neighbors. Some of the adults gave and some asked, why do you want these things? What are you going to do with them? They responded by saying, no, we cannot tell you that. That is a business secret. <laughs> So they collected all the plastics and the tubes and the tin cans that they needed, all the raw materials that they needed. He said that his father even once drove up with a friend of his to show him how these two nine-year-old were opening their own production line operating at full speed. There was fine white powder everywhere, milk cartons on the tables, red hot coal heating and, and burning at maximum heat and everything was messed up everywhere anyways one day his father walked up cautiously and asked what are you guys doing he said i am doing exactly what you told me to do we are making money we are on our path to becoming rich see and he showed him something he brought this plastic thing that they did and and poured some melted lead inside back then toothpaste tubes they weren't made from plastic they were made from lead so they poured it inside and the father was watching and he was like hey careful and he responded yeah okay but 
without looking at him and he was like really focused and once everything was done he just pop cracked it and a nickel fell <laughs> and his father was surprised he was shocked you are casting nickels out of lead so he then sat down with them and he explained to them how what they're doing is known to be called counterfeiting and what it is and explained everything to them and their dreams and hopes all broke down poor kids they were so sad and they were like oh so that's illegal and uh, sad kids the, they did a really good job they were creative so the father felt bad for them and he said okay you did a great job it's okay so you guys really want to be rich they said yeah we want to be rich he said okay go talk to mike's dad they looked at, it, at, at each other and mike asked my dad he said yes your father he said your father knows how to make money unlike jimmy's father everything he has is given by the sugar plantation company that he works at his high salary his car everything he owns and this sugar plantation company is in a very bad and tight financial situation they will soon be gone and jimmy's father will soon be amongst the middle or poor class families whereas your father mike he knows how to make money and he will be rich my dear viewers mike's dad did actually become rich in the future and if you haven't guessed it mike's father is actually the rich dad that robert kiyosaki talks about in the book so robert kiyosaki says mike went to his father and told him that they want to learn how to make money so his dad set an appointment for them which was on a saturday and when that day came they went to the place of the appointment or meeting which was mike's home and he described the house to be old and the wood was cranky the carpet needed replacement it, it wasn't all that and he had a small office inside somewhere and some employees a man who runs his warehouse some women who were restaurant managers a construction supervisor who was working on road houses about 50 miles away from there and another supervisor who was building a track of houses who had already left at that time left as in already finished with their father and left and the others are waiting to meet up with him suddenly mike's dad burst through the rickety screen door and onto the porch mike and robert kiyosaki jumped onto their feet not out of respect but because they were startled and he pulled up a chair to sit down and said ready boys they nodded their head then he looks at robert kiyosaki specifically and says my son told me that you want to learn how to make money is that true he said he was a big man about six feet tall and 200 pounds and a lot of power behind his words and the smile he said i nodded in agreement so mike's dad says okay i will teach you how to make money but i will not teach you the traditional way the academic way the way schools teach you with lectures i will teach you the way life teaches everybody i will teach you while you work for me and who does not want to work for me will not learn anything at all that is what i have take it or leave it so robert kiyosaki says okay but i have one question he says no take it or leave it i have a lot of work to do do not waste my time if you do not know how to make decisions decisively then you will never learn anything at all opportunities come and go being able to know when to make a quick decision is a very important skill you have the opportunity you asked for school starts or it's over in 10 seconds take it or leave it <laughs> holy shit damn i mean imagine how scary that was man the stress that that nine-year-old robert kiyosaki was in Oof, man so he said i accepted and mike accepted as well and then he told them okay i will be giving you 10 cents an hour three hours every saturday he said what every saturday no i i have softball he said with a lower tone very serious about to get angry take it or leave it he said okay okay i take it all right 
and that's when he chose to learn over gaming <laughs> what would you have done I don't know I would have probably went for gaming and be like yeah whatever what would you have done this is life anyways so days pass by a few weeks later their job was to keep the place clean clean the shelves clean the ground put keep the books arranged and just normal easy stuff and they got paid their 30 cents every Saturday which was nothing even back then even for a kid I mean all he did was buy three comic books he would buy one comic was for 10 cents so he would buy three and I'm sure he'd probably finish it before the end of the week like maybe in the middle of the week and then he'll have to sit down and wait till his next pay to again buy another three comics so this goes on for four weeks and they never saw Mike's dad since the first meeting one day Robert his father comes to him and asks him so how are things going I hope you've learned something he replied by saying no I haven't learned anything I mean I, I haven't even seen Mike's dad since the first meeting and he explained to him about his work how he was working and how much he's earning his dad was upset he said what you mean you did not see him at all since the first time and you did not learn anything? He said, yeah, never saw him, didn't learn anything. He says, no, 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 no. This is not acceptable. He is taking advantage of you. He is violating child labor law. He has to be investigated. Listen, you go talk to him and tell him he either teaches you properly or he pays you better than these peanuts you are getting. Now remember, this is the father that is called the poor dad in this book. So now he's all charged up. And he goes and he meets Mike and he says, Mike, I'm done with this crap. School is boring. I don't play anymore. And all I get in return is this thing your dad calls a pay. I don't have time to waste. I want to learn how to make money. Either your dad gives me a race or I'm done. I quit. He mentions in his book that what it really got to him is the 30 cents pay. So Mike smiled this time and it really got to Robert. He angrily said like, what are you laughing about? What is so funny? Why do you find this funny? He said, Dad told me that this would happen and you would act like this and you would say what you just said. And when this happens, we'll go meet him. So we'll go meet him next Saturday. He said, what? You mean your father has been waiting for me to get fed up? And on top of that, you knew about it and said nothing about it? You didn't tell me anything? He said, yeah, well, kinda. I mean, my dad is, he doesn't teach the way your dad teaches. Your mom and dad, they lecture a lot. My dad is a man of few words. You'll understand when we meet him. We'll meet him this Saturday. I'll tell him that you're ready. You mean we've been set up? He said, no, well, kinda. Listen, you'll understand Saturday. So now, waiting in line for the second time. He was ready to face Mike's dad with all the negativity and all that energy that he got from his actual dad, the poor dad, and all the requests. He was ready. So, it's Saturday, he makes it there, he goes in after Mike's dad opens the door and tells him, have a seat, wait in line. And he disappears into his office without saying any other word. He waited as everyone finished, it's been about 45 minutes, Mike's still nowhere to be found, he's all alone, waiting, and next thing, he thinks it is, it's about to be his turn to go in, and he, he hears Mike's dad take the phone up and start talking. He's roaming around, he can hear things moving about and he can hear Mike's dad on the phone and he, this kid is outside waiting for his turn, agitated and pissed off and this guy's on the phone talking. Man, that sucks. So the clock hits nine, Mike's dad opens the door without saying anything, not a single word. He just signals to Robert to get in. They're inside, they settle down. Mike's dad starts by saying, I understand you want a raise or you'll quit Robert Kiyosaki blurted out saying well you're not keeping your end of the bargain almost crying I mean this guy is definitely intimidating and here he is just a kid you said that you were going to teach me if I worked for you I worked for you I worked really hard I gave up my baseball games but you haven't kept your word and you haven't taught me anything you are a crook just like everybody is saying in town you are greedy, you want all the money for yourself, and you do not take care of your employees. You made me wait, you did not show me any respect. I am a kid, 
but I do deserve to be treated better. At this time, Rich Dad was listening carefully and calmly and waited for him to finish. And when he was done, he said, Hmm, not bad. In less than a month, you sound like most of my employees. So the kid did not understand anything. He just went out, he went on blurting and crying and, and, and complaining, uh, you are cruel, you're a cruel person, you, you, didn't, you did not teach me, uh, you don't care about this. And the rich dad was still calm, listening to him, and he calmly said, I am teaching you. What have you taught me? Nothing. You haven't even talked to me since I agreed to work for your peanuts. 10 cents an hour? Ha! I should notify the government about you. My dad works for the government, you know? Wow! Now, you sound like most of the people who used to work for me. People I've either fired or who have already quit. This kid didn't understand nothing, didn't understand anything at all yet. He was tired and he just wanted to end it. He said, you did not teach me anything. I worked really hard and I got nothing from you. He responded by saying, how do you know I did not teach you anything? Well, you never spoke with me. <laughs> what are you talking about? He asked him, does lecturing you and talking to you mean teaching? He said, well, yeah, obviously. He told them that is how schools teach you. My method of teaching is different. I teach just like the world teaches you. And I believe the world is the best teacher. It teaches you without saying anything to you at all. I am giving you real world education. If you learn from the lessons of life, you will be successful. If not, then life will just continue pushing you around. And my dear viewers, this is very, very, very accurate. This is how we all or at least most of us fall into debts and uh, keep jumping from one job to the other. This is exactly how this happens to all of us. So this kid asked him, he said, you know what? Tell me, tell me, tell me. What do you think that I learned from working for you for 10 cents an hour, three hours a week? Tell me, because all I learned is that you are a greedy person and you do not take care of your employees. So tell me, why don't you tell me, huh? He said, change your point of view. Stop blaming me for your problems and try to change yourself and learn. And that is how you gain wisdom. When you face a problem, you learn how to fix it. You learn how to get out of it and benefit from it. That is a lot better than blaming others. Learn and grow. Don't be like many other people who want the whole world to change just for them without them putting any kind of effort in changing themselves. God, that is so true. Man, that is one of the golden lines that I heard in this book. He told him, it is much easier to change yourself than to try changing someone else. This kid understood nothing. He asked him, he, he told him, I don't get it. What are, you, what are you talking about? At this point, Rich Dad, he was losing it. He was losing his patience. <laughs> he said, boy, stop blaming me for your problems. The kid responded by saying, yeah, but you are. You're only paying me 10 cents an hour. He said, okay, and what are you learning from that? That you are cheap? He said, okay, you know what? Keep that attitude and you will learn nothing. Just keep that. Just, just do that. Keep on thinking the way you are and trust me, you will learn nothing. You know what? Tell me, what options do you have? He said, well, if you don't pay me more, show me more respect and teach me, I will quit. He said, well put. And that is exactly what most people do. They go looking for another job. They go looking for another opportunity. They go looking for a better pay, believing that this will actually solve the problem. And in most cases, it never does. He asked, so what should I do? Just take this measly 10 cents an hour, take it, keep quiet and smile? He said, that's what most of the other people do. They just sit quietly, wait for a raise, thinking that more money would come which would solve their problems, or they would take a second job, work even harder, and earn 
a small paycheck still earning a small paycheck damn i mean life man so now the kid started getting the picture and he asked him so what would solve the problem he leaned forward tapped on his head and said this thing between your ears he leaned forward in his chair tapped on his head and said this thing between your ears the kid still kind of did not get it he said what do you mean he told him use your head the lesson that i taught you these past few weeks is that salaries never lead to wealth tell me what have you felt or how did you feel how did you feel when you were waiting in line two times the first time asking for a job and the second time asking for a raise tell me how did you feel he responded by saying terrible that felt terrible both times both worse than the other he told him that is exactly how you would feel for the rest of your life if you continued the way you are and how did you feel when miss martin dropped those three dimes on your hand at the end of every saturday how did you feel he said i felt like it was not enough it seemed like i wasn't getting paid enough it seemed like it was nothing i was really disappointed and that is how most of the employees feel every time they look at their paycheck at nine years old you have gotten a taste of what it feels like to work just multiply that multiply the last month by 50 years and that is what most of the people go through for their whole lives they go all the way to 50 and 60 years looking for a raise looking for a better job looking for a promotion that's all they run after more money they get more debts they get into and i'm not talking about debts like uh i don't know m many people have different meanings of debts um, just imagine all the debts okay the debts where you get a loan to get a car to get married to get a nice uh, weekend whatever you do like all those kind of debts this this is how it is this is like a small version or, or a simplified version for us to actually look at it and understand it and once we understand that if we put that in our age and time like an actual work uh, work where, where there's an actual workforce it's a company or whatever you know listen even if you if you want to make let's say a youtube channel yeah and and then you start getting your subscribers and views and everything is going good and then you start you're a gamer let's say and then you start streaming think about it you, when you're streaming you're still working you're looking for that paycheck so you're putting hours for that paycheck we'll talk about this some other time then he told them the poor class and the middle class always work for money the rich class have money work for them and this is the first lesson that I am going to give you <laughs> the first lesson that I am going to give you not gave you remember this is the introduction so he's telling him I'm going to teach you this <laughs> man this is awesome so he asked him tell me did I teach you or not he said yeah well okay you did teach me he said perfect now are you ready to actually start learning or not he said absolutely I am definitely ready he said perfect now go back to work and this time I am paying you nothing absolutely nothing at all <laughs> what <laughs> he said yeah you heard me you will work the same three hours the same work you've been doing every Saturday for nothing I will not pay you at all you said you want to learn how to not work for money so i'm not going to pay you anything at all mike has already accepted he's already started working so off you go quickly time is running he said that's not fair you have to pay me something 
you said you want to learn and if you do not learn this now you will end up like those two women outside in my living room and that other older man over there working for money hoping to not get fired or like your dad earning lots of money and falling into debts all up to his eyeballs hoping that money or more money would solve his problem if that is what you want I will go back to our original deal 10 cents per hour or you could quit and go look for another better job he said but what do I do again he tapped on his head and he said use this if you use it well trust me you are going to thank me one day and you will grow up to be a very rich man and you will thank me for the opportunity that I have given you he said I stood there like okay he's done he's going out he said I stood there amazed but what had just happened by the raw deal that I have been dealt I came asking for a raise and I'm leaving working for nothing at all <laughs> amazing and right before they left Mike's dad again tapped on his head and said use this now get out of here and get back to work my dear viewers we have reached to the conclusion of the introductory episode of the series money mindset makeover and in the next video we will be talking about one of the six lessons that Robert talks about and in his own words I want to read this because I don't want to screw this up I've screwed enough in the video uh, where was it all right and when it was all said and done there were only six main lessons repeated over 30 years this book is about those six lessons put as simply as possible just as simply as my rich dad put forth those lessons to me the lessons are meant not to be answers but guideposts that will assist you and your children and your families to grow wealthier no matter what happens in a world of increasing change and, 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 and uncertainty. If you like this video, like, share and subscribe so that others can reap the benefits. <laughs> I thank you very much for your precious, invaluable and greatly appreciated time. See you in the next video.